What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy AK Dog back in standard playing with a Jund party list. Uh, so obviously party is a mechanic that we uh, just got in Zendikar Rising. Doesn't quite, uh, not quite fully fleshed out and supported, but we'll be getting that over the next couple sets. So nothing really too competitive with the party uh, theme just yet, but it's going to keep growing in power level. But uh, still kind of fun to play around with and definitely want to kind of get a feel for uh, some different party decks, especially as we do get those new sets here in the coming months so we can kind of have a better idea of how to kind of uh, build around uh, the, the uh, possible party uh, options that may be open to us. So in this one, uh, the reason to go Jund here uh, is Tajuru Paragon. Uh, obviously, uh, some of the uh, creatures that fit the party type are, uh, there's a few like really, really good ones, and then a lot of them are kind of borderline unplayable. But then uh, <clears throat> if you're... Uh, not in green, then you, you're kind of stuck with like the pack beast as your way to kind of help you flesh out the uh, party uh, <coughs> party types. But uh, Tejuru Paragon actually gives us a 2 mana 3 2, so it's a little bit better body than the uh, pack beast, which is just a 2 1. And uh, still counts as all the types. It has a little kicker ability where you can uh, dig for additional um, creature uh, types. Your You know, any anything that shares a type with it, which is. Uh, right here, Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard. So basically, uh, kick it for five total mana, and you get a dig for a uh, <clears throat> another creature in the party theme. So that's pretty sweet uh, in the top deck. And on turn two, it's pretty fantastic, just having a 3-2. Um, <clears throat> so the rest of the options we got here is uh, three Blood Chief Search, just fantastic removal in the early game, late game, any time, really. Uh, three Malakir Blood Priest. Uh, it's going to be our Cleric of Choice here on two along with our uh, no priest of oblivion which i'm a big fan of uh no priest of oblivion just two copies here sometimes it's actually better to just uh, wait and kick this in the late game so we're gonna three copies here of malakir blood priest two copies of oblivion here and uh blood priest is a two one for two uh, both of them are two ones uh, this one when it enters we uh have each opponent lose x life and we gain x life where x is the number of creatures in your party um <clears throat> We don't have any uh, one drops, obviously. So if you just play this one on turn two, then it's uh, obviously not as good. But uh, we want to kind of want to get set up with like our robber and our Tajuru Paragon things like that, and at least get it, uh, have it come down on like turn two. Maybe play tap land, and then have this come down and drain our opponent for uh, for two, and then we gain two life, and uh, <clears throat> that sort of thing. And then obviously top decking with a full party out, then that's going to be pretty sweet. Uh, three robber the rich. That's obviously one of the better rogues you can be playing here. Uh, reach haste gives you card advantage by potentially still in cards from the top of your opponent's library and uh, cast them as long as we've attacked with a rogue uh, two murderous riders just some good removal two ardent electromatter just kind of looking for wizards uh, this kind of is uh, one of our better options you know three mana three two is pretty me pretty medium but you know three power it's not terrible and we get to add red for each creature in our party so we could potentially chain a different diff initial spell off of this Two Shatter Skull Chargers. 4 3 Trample Haste. Uh, you have to kick it for additional two to have it stay on the battlefield with a counter on it. Uh, otherwise, it just comes back to your hand, which kind of works out in your favor a lot of times. If your opponent has a uh, very removal heavy, you can kind of dodge their removal, get in with a four powered attack, and have it bounce back to your hand. Just kind of keep repeating that and uh, force your opponent to kind of uh, deal with it that way. Uh, one copy here of Balaged Recovery. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, the format is very removal heavy right now, so Balaged Recovery. A nice top deck, or if we do uh, have other lands in hand, we can just kind of get one of our cards back to our uh, out of our graveyard back to our hand. And we're very creature heavy, obviously, so we're going to be looking to get one of our uh, creatures back. We we'll also just block and trade and just know that we can get it back with a Balagad recovery here as well. But having the flexibility, I have a uh, green land as well is pretty nice. Uh, two copies here of Broken Wings. Uh, just looking for a way to kind of flesh out the uh, three drop slot here. And uh, Broken Wings giving us a uh, some versatile removal for artifacts, enchantments, and creatures with flying. Uh, we do have a couple creatures with flying as well, so it'd be kind of nice to do this on turn three to kind of clear the air for uh, uh, our flyer that might come down the turn after it. Or uh, just having some main deck artifact and enchantment hate as well is pretty uh, is pretty nice. Two copies of Rada, Heart of Keld. She is a warrior, so that's pretty fantastic. She already kind of fits in with the party theme here. And uh, <clears throat> having help us to dig through our library by hitting the land drops off, of, off the top of our library. And if it does game, and the game does kind of drag on a little bit, the activated ability is pretty fantastic. A couple copies of Hagra at Mauling. Uh, just trying to look for ways to kind of uh, <clears throat> keep our land count down while she's having spells, but also having, kind of having that flexibility here a little bit. Just two copies, though. Two copies of Rankle, obviously another fantastic rogue. It's kind of a little bit of everything for us. You know, we have some creatures that would potentially... 
uh, sacrifice, you know, like our Malakir Blood Priest. You know, we're more interested in the enter the battlefield effect and things like that. And if we need to sacrifice it, then so be it. You know, if we have multiple, uh, you know, something else, maybe the robber uh, can't really attack, the, attack into your opponent anymore, we can just sacrifice that. You know, we have some two drop creatures that we can sacrifice to our rankle and force our opponent to uh, get rid of something they didn't necessarily want to. Or, of course, we can just use it for card advantage or uh, card disadvantage. Kind of depends on what the matchup is like. Uh, speaking of card advantage, Jarag Visionary. It's a format at 3 2. The, when it enters, we draw a card. Uh, not too impressive, but you know, we're obviously a little bit light on card draw and a little bit light on wizards. So uh, the Visionary here is going to kind of fill that role for us. Get a little bit of card advantage <coughs> while, drawing, uh, while uh, filling out our wizard slot. A couple of veteran adventures. Uh, this is a human, so it doesn't actually count towards our uh, party type. However, it uh, costs one less for each creature in our party. It's 5-5 five, five with Vigilance, and it also counts as party members as well. So it does kind of help us out uh, in that regard. So even though it doesn't say, just like the uh, Paragon doesn't actually say uh, that it is that type. It's, you know, Elf, and you have Human, but it also has these texts here where it says it also counts as those types as well. So it actually does help out your party. Flesh out your party. To Zagras. Uh, big fan of this card as well. Obviously, six mana, four four, a little bit expensive. However, it costs one less for each uh, creature in your party. Flying Death Touch haste, and other creatures you control have Death Touch, and that's pretty amazing right there. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, we get to destroy that Planeswalker, which kind of seems like what Death Touch already should do, but you know. Uh, mana base here. We're also trying to run the uh, the um, Mythic lands here, so we've got Turn Your Symbiosis, Shadow Skull Smashing, and Agadim's Awakening. So definitely at different points of the uh, game, we can try to get some value uh, off of any of it, these cards. Um, and also just having them come down as lands in the early game, uh, just kind of help us uh, fill out our curve can be nice as well. Man base here uh, for basic lands, we got three swamp, one mountain, one forest, three temple of mouse, three temple of Maudi, uh, four of the crag crown pathways, four base camps. Unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with base camps, so we don't have the... Uh, Golgari Pathways, we don't have the Rakdos Pathways, we just have the uh, the uh, Gruul ones here. Um, so we're in base camp to kind of help us flesh out our creatures, and since we are pretty uh, creature heavy, um, this should be pretty fine. <coughs> Shouldn't really hold us back from casting of our other, other spells. And then for some additional uh, fixing here, two Fabled Passages. Uh, sideboard here, we got uh, three Duress, two Elspeth's Nightmare. Uh, two Palaka Predation, two Phoenix of Ash, two Clothis, Extinction Event, Pelucanos, and Gargaroth there. Uh, so against the Control decks, obviously, we're going to bring in Dress, and since we're pretty uh, uh, pretty heavy on two-drop creatures, uh, I don't really want to mess with the two-drop slot, uh, so we'll, we'll probably just take out the Blood Chief's Thirst and bring in Dress. Uh, obviously, we have the Murder Strider, and we have, uh, obviously, very creature-heavy, so we'll just kind of lean on our creatures to uh, kind of finish off any opponent's Planeswalkers, and the Dress as well to kind of help us uh, dodge removal. Also, if Nightmare can kind of come in against uh, like rogues or any other kind of a creature heavy deck where we can hit a uh, creature with power two or less. And then also uh, steal away a card from their hand is pretty fantastic in the rogue matchup. And then exile your opponent's graveyard can be relevant in a fair number of matchups as well. Uh, obviously, we've seen like Mac, uh, Rakdos midrange and things like that uh, with Kroxa and um, the little magmatic channel or whatever, that two drop wizard. So that's a good target for this as well. So this kind of uh, works up against a variety of matchups in the current meta. Uh, Plucker Predation uh, gives us a land that can also be a discard spell as well. I'm not a big fan of this card, but I think it's kind of interesting to kind of maybe try to play with some of these, like uh, even out of the sideboard. Um, I don't know how main deckable card like this is, depending on what you're trying to do, obviously. But um, I think it's a better fit for us out of the sideboard because it kind of gives us increase our land count in the control matchups because it could be a grindier matchup. Oh, we're also having a potential to discard as well, so it's like a pretty good fit here. Uh, and there's obviously lots of rogues and just kind of mill in general, so Phoenix of Ash and Pelucanos be able to escape them, uh, even though obviously they don't fit with our party synergy. Just uh, just good, good good value on their own. And, uh, you know, like I said, with the uh, amount of mill that's out there, uh, just having ways to uh, escape and uh, still getting value that even though you're being milled, um, while also reducing the size of your graveyard can kind of hurt the rogue uh, rogues. Uh, quite a bit, so it's pretty sweet. Clothus here gives us some additional uh, graveyard hate. Uh, being able to exile things from the graveyard uh, every upkeep, and it's indestructible, of course. Uh, we're kind of mostly pretty heavily leaning into black and kind of splashing a little bit of red and green, so I don't know how often we'll actually be able to get to devotion on Clothus. But uh, even like it's like control matchups, just that incremental uh, two, two, uh, 2 damage every turn can be uh, can be pretty powerful. So, 2 Clothus. 
one extinction event, obviously a scoot swarm and other kind of go wide type strategies are running around out there and they can be kind of difficult to deal with at times. So uh, even though we're creature heavy, it feels like uh, having that one copy of this feels like it's uh, pretty important. Um, uh, obviously we can kind of pick and choose between odd and even creatures to play out onto the battlefield. Depending on what our opponent is up to, we can kind of play around, uh, play around that depending on what we're planning to exile on their side while still kind of adding uh, the uh, obviously the opposite uh, mana cost to the board. And then the Gargoth can come in um, against a variety of matchups as well. If our opponent's like running lots of removal, things like that, then obviously something like Veteran Adventure uh, it gets a lot worse. It's nice to have this in the main deck because it does kind of uh, allow us to play like on theme here in the uh, game one at least. And then uh, game two, we can kind of add like good cards, if you will. So things, some, like, things like Elder Gargroth, which works against, you know, obviously uh, aggro, being able to, you know, make three threes or gain you life. Or uh, even against control, the three threes can be good, and uh, the drawing the cards can also be pretty great as well. So if you can resolve this uh, against those decks, it's pretty fantastic, and just kind of gives you a little bit better option than the um, uh, yeah, adventure. Obviously, if your opponents run tons of removal, then having a six mana five five with the vigilance isn't really great, especially when there's nothing else on the board. Um, so yeah, Gargroth is going to come in. in those matchups. So I have mostly been playing this in best of one, so the sideboard might not be quite as tuned. Uh, I was all, as I would like, but we're going to give it a try and uh, we can kind of talk through it if there's any uh, additional changes to make. All right, jump into some matches. All right, against Cypelius. All right, so obviously uh, Arena just did their update and uh, things are bugged as worse as they've ever been. So this is unranked play, but it's still showing uh, people's rank. Uh, I'm in Platinum, so I'm assuming my opponent's ranks are accurate to where they are at as well. Huh. I mean, Robber's pretty good. If they kill it, we can Balagid recovery it. Zygras is pretty sweet. We'll try it. Nothing else going on at once. We got the base camp. <clears throat> Showing Simic so far. Top. Alright, also got the uh, Note Priest here as well. So we'll see what they do. We'll probably still lean on Robber. Cannon. Uh, not their, uh, doubt they're blocking with that unless they have another one. So some kind of a ramp deck. Yeah, you're not blocking. Oh, you are? You have another cannon? Or you just don't like robber? Well, Balagade can get that back, or we can just no priest here. Okay, so Simic ramp. You just a uh, Ugin deck. Just do it again, take away the ramp, I guess. <clears throat> Play base camp number two, I guess. Obviously, we don't love throwing away our creatures like that, but I mean, we keep them off of their uh, ramp play. Scavenge and ooze. Just the utility, I guess. Sure. <clears throat> um. Oh, you're missing uh, green here. Uh, let's. Pathway. We're going to get that out of our yard so they can't eat it up. There we go. That's one time base camp is a little bit awkward when you're trying to cast a spell, but you know we have just enough fixing here with pathways and failed passages and whatnot. So your uh, ramp, ramp mutate deck. Okay. So here we can uh, robber plus no priest. Or Hagger Mullen's pretty good too. So we're missing a second black source. So we'll just drop our robber and uh, no priest here. Nothing to get back in our yard to hold it up for the kicker. Plus they have oozing play. And we're probably just going to Hagger Mullen their uh, Great Horn next turn. Vivian's pretty good. 3-3. Three, three. Where's that? Vigilance? Okay. Marauder's right, not bad, though. Alright, well, she has some options here. Uh, 
Uh, we can Hagram all in their Great Horn, which I really want to do, but we don't need to deal with this Vivian here. So we're going to Zagros. It's worth attacking and forcing them to block. Sure. Let's see. Let's give them a, let's give them a chance to make some uh, trades here. Okay, we had a jumpy dinar off them, so it might have been worth it right there. It's possible they find like auspicious star eggs underneath it though, so eh. we do have death touch. So they lose their creature, and we uh, get to hold on to our Hagra Mauling now. We also have a Rada in, Rada in our hand. I drop that next turn and see if we can get our land or something else off the top. Bouncing Shore Shark, gonna bounce uh, Zagras. Okay. One man open, I don't have any other creatures. We'll kill that. So, obviously, the uh, Mutate decks can do some pretty uh, crazy things if left unchecked, but you, if you don't have good removal, then um, they obviously they're having a rough time. So, we have just enough removal in our deck, and we've uh, obviously been a little bit fortunate to draw into it. And Zagras as well, giving things a uh, uh, death touch. It's pretty critical. So, it's kind of tempting to run like a third one, but I'm not quite sure how to. How we'd want to fit it in. So just sticking with two, especially I only just now got a third one. Uh, it's tempting to run a lot to drop Rada and hope for a land. Uh, obviously they can uh, exile and uh, keep their Teferi alive. So we're going to go for Blood Chief Thirst just to get the tef Teferi off the board. They can do a, another draw discard here or they can try to phase out one of our creatures. Okay, they're going to draw. Discard in a land. So we get the Teferi off the board. And they still have three cards in hand, so we can potentially cast something. Uh, sure, we'll take a Symbiote. Nothing else to do. Let's see, we're missing um, Warrior, so we can Rada and Zagras next turn. That seems pretty good. And we have a Null Priest in hand, so whatever they uh, try to kill, we can kind of deal with that. I dig through our... Yeah, that's fine. Alright, hit all the lands off the top, and they've been discarding lands, so... Kind of doing them a favor, it seems like. Okay, they're going to trade with the uh, Kahira and... Uh, a robber, that's fun. We can kick the Null Priest and get the robber back anyway with haste. Okay, you're down to one life. And you want to uh, mutate onto a Sea Dasher. Your Sea Dasher onto your Polywog Symbiote. Instead of dealing with stuff we already have. I don't have any uh, artifacts or enchantments. I, mean, I guess you're just kind of dead anyway because we have Flying, we have Menace. So, yeah. Alright, wasn't too sure how well we would match up with the uh, Mutate deck, but uh, we got there. Hmm. So they had... So I'm not sure we need Broken Wings. I haven't seen any... Uh, I don't have anything with Flying... More artifacts or enchantments, so we can take out broken wings. Uh, nightmare if we can hit their, them before they mutate, but that's kind of unlikely. Hmm. Either way, we can take this out. Gargroth is interesting. Phoenix can kind of be a little more aggressive. They do have reach though, with uh, between Gem Razor and Vivian. So we will just bring in the Gargaroth here and just try to expect a little more grindier matchup. Uh, if they do go off, especially since they're going first, maybe the uh, Extinction Event might be worth it. Although plot competition is pretty interesting as well.
because a lot of the mutations tend to be uh, four or five on the casting cost. Uh, we'll try like this. Well, we can play our Paragons, at least. That won't be until turn three. You're in the draw, though, so maybe we can draw another land. Obviously, we need uh, red here for our robber. Don't have any removal either, so uh, it's probably a little bit too sketchy. All right, this is reasonable, and I think we'll ditch the temple since we have, well, just lean on the base camp here. So you go base camp, pathway on uh, red, I guess. So we got robber into Rada. Obviously on the draw, not as good. They'll probably have a creature here. Lotus Cobra. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with making this trade. <clears throat> must be There must be a mutate uh, Ugin deck, I would assume. That's what the uh, Kenan Cobra Visionary package is for, just to ramp you into Ugin, I guess. You know, we don't have Finale of Devastation or any of those cards. Alright, we got the uh, Great Horn Mutate. No removal in our hands, so... Are they going to get aggressive here, or are they going to stay defensive? Stay back on the blocks. Alright. <clears throat> Good charger here. Rod is pretty good, then. Let's uh, charger. Let's uh, since we don't have removal. Let's see if uh, they want to make a trade here. Not gonna attack with the robber. Yet. Pretty easy block for them. Okay. Get them down to fourteen. Might uh, incentivize them to play more defensively. I guess we just uh, be man efficient here and draw into the play into the visionary. Maybe hope to draw into some removal. Well, there's Starix, so not looking too good for us. Just to land. Oh, that was a great horn uh, land trigger, and then the uh, Starix gets them a visionary. And Scoot Storm. Okay. That's good enough for me. Yeah, these uh, Scoot Swarm Mutate decks are pretty obnoxious. So we'll bring in the Predations and try that instead. Well, I probably should have had the Predations in game two, and then maybe this game go to the Golgoroth, but we'll see. <clears throat> Basically, all their nasty stuff is over three mana anyway. Oh, well, here we got all the removal, so that's Keeper in my book. Uh, maybe. <clears throat> Obviously, we do want them to add to the board. So I'm going to throw this out there. You can always exile on uh, odd. Oh, get them off a great horn. That's kind of cool. Rod is pretty good. We do need to find some party payoffs, so I guess we'll final draw into these. If they want to block here, that's uh, <coughs> it's fine with me. Especially on the mutate decks, you just want to try to keep them off of creatures as much as possible. And since we're a little bit light on the removal side. Let's keep them off ramp and give them a potential mutate, so we'll just fire that off. Uh, let's see, we have two black, two red, one green. 
More scale codal. That's pretty spicy. Guess we can grab our green source. Don't have, don't have anything in hand to really benefit, but. Well, symbiosis. Could draw into something. Again, just want to keep them off being able to mutate anything, so we'll go ahead and kill that. Yeah, I think we just play it out. So we try to hold on to it as a spell. We need one more green land and just two uh, additional lands on top of that. So that's uh, probably asking a little bit too much. So just play more lands to give us more options. Alright, Teferi's pretty annoying, especially since we uh, do not have uh, creatures on board. Not finding any of our two drops except uh, Robber. <coughs> Obviously, game one, that was a huge, uh, made a huge difference. And now here in games two and three. Oh, there's the Paragon. Could kick it to draw. Alright, so we do this, we get another red mana. So let's do the Electromancer into Rada. Okay, so we got a Zagras coming next turn. That'll help us out with this Teferi. Uh, Zagras was pretty clutch in game one as well, so... Uh, they have lots of cards in hand, and uh, they got the Teferi there to kind of filter their draws. Fix any uh, flooding on their side. But we've uh, been able to keep them off of creatures to mutate onto, so... See what they got. <clears throat> Not really weighing all their options there. Looking at our murderous riders. Looking at their Teferi. Playing the Florahedron as a uh, creature. <clears throat> just so they can mutate on top of it. Bouncing Rada. And with a Teferi in play, they can uh, just phase out our Electromancer here as well. It's pretty annoying. So I think we'll just go for Zagreus. Swing both at Teferi. They'll probably phase out our Zagreus here. At least keeps them from uh, upticking them. And now with Teferi at 3, they kind of have to block. I would think so. Because Zagras stays phased out until our next turn, so even if they mutate on top of the Shore Shark, uh, they can't even target our Zagras. So it'll be phased out until my turn. Okay, so they must have a. I'm guessing they have a Star X in hand. They don't want to lose this Shore Shark. Uh, if they do, we'll probably just Extinction Event. Okay, I have a octopus. They get to draw some cards here. Draw a card, bounce our electromancer, and with the extinction of it, that actually kind of works out in our favor. I just kind of hope they play another creature here. So this is on five. So that we need to target odd. You go reach. I would assume. <clears throat> yep. So get the protector Vivian. Uh, obviously, since you typically want to get at least a couple creatures with it, but with the mutations, uh, I think we just kind of have to deal with this Shore Shark here. Well, we'll force him to block. Odd. We can make another creature here to block our Zagras. And then just keep chump blocking until we add to the board. 
<clears throat> so I'll probably need to Electromancer into Arata again. But I guess let's get back a Teferi. Do have another land? Well, that's pretty annoying. Vivian and Teferi at the same time. So they can uh, they can either block or they can um, phase out our Zagreus here. But the draw discard doesn't really do anything on an empty empty board here. Okay, minus three. Yep. Well, we'll do the Electromancer Rada. So we got a land on top. And Balagid. Got a robber of the rich. Does that matter? They're empty handed. Uh, it is a hasty threat that we can play. Uh, we have a land in hand. So I think we'll actually just uh, bottom that. Oh, another land. Okay, they uh, take advantage of Vivian to cast their Great Horn off the top of their library. Pretty good. Good thing is they can't minus to phase anything out with their Teferi now, but uh, Vivian is going to give them a wall of creatures, though. Two cards in hand, one mana open here. I can filter and discard a land. I'm sure they've got some lands to discard here. Yep. And a 3 3. Right, we're going to try to attack here. We need to deal with this Vivian. Uh, also, Teferi is pretty obnoxious because it's going to be able to phase out uh, here pretty soon. We can attack with Rada, and depending on how they block, we could pump up the Rada. So they do have the Reach here. Uh, we're gonna go for it. I think we'll just swing. It sure, it really matters. I mean, they're probably gonna, they're gonna block. I'm not really sure why why they chose that route. Swing uh, the Rada at Vivian so we can pump it up, potentially kill Vivian, depend if they don't block correctly. Okay, they had reach, so I thought they might double block our Zagreus. So they're gonna lose their Teferi here. Well, I'm fine with these blocks. Love to deal with the Vivian, though. Uh, let's kick this. So we know we have one on top, at least. Play the Adventure. Seems pretty good. Two mana, five, five Vigilance. Seems pretty good. Uh, this Vivian's definitely a problem, though. But if we can deal with that and keep them off from like Starix, then we've got a chance. But I mean, Teferi gave them so many, so many looks at uh, some better mutate creatures, and here they go. Yep. All right. Things are not looking too good now. Starix is a pretty powerful card. Kind of crazy that it's only an uncommon. I mean, obviously it is pretty expensive for what it does, but uh, so much value. So much value. They get a land, they get a dig, a couple cards on top of the library, they get a ooze, and another Starix. Alright, cool. I mean, yeah, mutate's pretty busted if you don't have enough removal, and uh, we're, we're, unfortunately we're a little bit light on removal. Alright, we got 877241. This one keep this.
put an old priest on two, and then just kind of figure it out from there. There's an untap land. Sure. Some kind of a cycling deck. Escape protocol. Alright, no priest, come on down. So we got double black open to us for a murderous rider. Uh, now that we have lands, we can kind of save the Balagid for uh, the actual spell side of it. Uh, I haven't seen red, but I'm assuming they're uh, just sky for the Zenith Flare. Why else would you be in cycling? But they got the escape, escape protocol, so maybe they're up to some uh, jank shenanigans here. <clears throat> well, I haven't seen any uh, thing to murderous ride just yet. Paragon here. Could save it, but we'll go ahead and run it out there. Just add more to the board since I don't have anything going on. Makes our murder Rider better because now we can hit for five. So we, they are playing creatures. Or they have creatures in their deck. That was a red creature. Still no red mana sources. They could have just kept the sketchy hand. Of course, we've seen cycling decks that cycle things that have nothing to do with actually casting them. You know, like the... Uh, Typical uh, Boral Cycling would often run the the black, uh, was it Memory Leak or whatever that is? Just literally just could cycle it for one. So it's got two tap lands here. So we'll just play one of them. And now we have Murderous Rider open to us still. I don't think we need that at this point. So hopefully they play a creature and we can actually uh, get some value off this Murderous Rider. Electromancer. Okay. And another one. So there, just to help you cycle. Not sure what our opponent is up to. Robber is interesting. We're just going to get in here for six or five, though. I don't think I want to choose any of these modes, honestly. Alright, they haven't shown us that they have removal, so we we'll, don't think we need a second rankle and backup. So we'll bottom that. Uh, fun uh, that plan, we can Visionary and Robber. So if we don't untap, if we don't find untap plan, we can just Visionary, and uh, that'll give us another look at an untap plan potentially. Uh, two cards in hand, don't really like that. Right, we're gonna go Visionary. Seem to be holding up something here. Maybe they have their Zenith Flare since they have Red Mana activated. Uh, it's a three drop, so we can't actually blood chiefs uh, anything just yet. Seeing if they're taking out our rankle. So obnoxious! How uh, how much value that gives? You just cycle, 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 and then you just gain ten, fifteen, whatever life. It's just God. It's bad enough it deals damage to you, but it gains you life. It's just, man, so much value. Robber. And I uh, just want to put the pressure on them, so we're going to swing all. Got a pretty good board state. They get a ton of life off their last Zenith Flare. They probably have another one, though. And they're holding something in hand. Pass turn. Have the cleric coming down, that might be good enough to close out this game. Another hard casting boon of the wishgiver to refill, digging for that zenith flare, I assume. 
and they didn't find it. The most interesting thing about these cycling decks is just like you, you, you don't do anything impressive. Um, and then you either draw the Zenith Flare to kill your opponent or you don't and your deck kind of does nothing. Like, I don't know, those games just aren't really all that fun to me. Um, but, you know, the good thing about Z uh, cycling, though, it is very budget-friendly. And um, that's always it's always helpful in the format because, obviously, magic, even on online, can be pretty expensive. All right, we, they had the escape protocol, but it didn't seem like they were getting any value off it, so I don't think we need the uh, broken wings. Um, see, the electromasters were three power, so they're just a little bit out of range. Uh, let's try to dress and get the Zenith Flare out of their hand. And Predation can also help us out with that. Like, if we take away Zenith Flare, then their deck doesn't really do anything. Uh, Clothis kind of helps out there as well. So we'll bring in Clothis. Hmm. Alright, we'll try like that. Rod is good, but I think uh, I think we need ways to deal with their graveyard and try to hit their hand uh, at the same time. I'm going to draw. I guess we'll give this a try. A little bit slow here. Double tap land. But with all these two drops, I mean, once we get going, then we can cast, like, everything in our hand, so. It's not terrible. Oh, there's untap land. Perfect. All right, base camp. So probably lean on uh, Robber or Null Priest. I think Robber, Null Priest, Paragon, then Malakir. Seems pretty good. Well, they're uh, down some cards here, so we don't get the robber trigger. They find all their lands this time, though. Electromancer on three. Let's see what we got. Uh, we have one in hand. I think we'll bottom that. I assume they'll trade here. So given our hand, I think we'll actually just uh, slow roll this. All right, so we got Paragon plus Duress next turn. <clears throat> and no Priest with the Menace can still attack. Unless they're playing like a Shark Typhoon or something. We found an untapped land, so we could Paragon plus Priest. Let's uh, no priest. Let's see if that forces something out of their hand. Especially if they cycle. I'd rather them cycle and then get the dress afterwards. But they could have some more removal here. Not sure what they would uh, sideboard. It's pretty pretty janky cycling deck. So we'll see. We'll see what they got going on. Paragon, come on down. Nyambi. That's, uh, that's quite the jank there. I'm not sure what the point of that is. Swallow hole. Okay, so they get to exile our Null Priest. Uh, that Shadow School is pretty good. Especially if they're running like uh, sorcery speed removal. I'm going to tap one of your creatures down to exile my Null Priest here. I'm going to cycle first, see what they got. <clears throat> not sure I see Swallow Hole being a good card for their list, but... Doesn't see a whole lot of play, so I'm kind of happy to see it in a way. So Naomi gives them a Wizard. Or no, Cleric. That's right. So it can't be a wizard because this is already a wizard. Because party counts for each uh, separate type. Well, so they, uh, that was a pretty nice turn for them, except now they're empty handed. But I mean, yeah, getting uh, additional mana plus a land drop. Let them go off with uh, additional Electromancer, and they still have mana open to uh, swallow a hole here.
think I should just play this like this. And then we get a little bit of drainage here with our Malakir Blood Priest. Let's swing all. Let's force them to trade off where they don't want to. Down to five. So we're going to lose our Shatter Skull, but... Opponent's not really uh, doing much over there. Down to two, and uh, perfect. All right, we just got uh, just got lethal. Malkir Blood Priest is a pretty pretty solid card in the party deck. Obviously, Clothes would have helped too, but we were missing uh, green manas. So they're the kind of downside of base camp, but still think it's worth it uh, overall. So yeah, pretty uh, interesting cycling deck for my opponent. I was glad to see some uh, different cards there. Still running Zenith Flare, obviously, but uh, some, they sound like they were all in on that. Electromancer, even Naomi there, so they're kind of doing like a little bit of a party sub theme. It's kind of spicy, I like that. So yeah, obviously uh, Mutate's pretty pretty busted. That was a pretty tough uh, matchup because we're running just very very minimal removal here. Uh, so the reason we're running Broken Wings to kind of deal with flyers, but uh, obviously doesn't really do well against that matchup. We have the Hagrid Mollings. Murderous Rider as two of each, and then the three Blood Chiefs are, so it's uh, it's a reasonable amount of removal overall. More just trying to kind of go wide and just kind of get the incremental value from, uh, you know, things like a Malachir Blood Priest and things like that to kind of uh, kind of swarm our opponent. Uh, obviously, it's not very competitive, um, just party in general and this particular uh, version in general, but uh, definitely want to take a look at Jun because it's not a version that I had... Uh, really seen inbuilts uh, do as far as content creators so definitely wanted to play around with this one and so this is kind of the uh, uh, the ratio that I've kind of settled on uh, like I said I haven't really played a ton of best of three so not entirely sure about the sideboard but it felt pretty good in matchups that we played right there we like having the option to uh, Gargaroth uh, just just making the deck main deck a little bit better here in games two and three um, obviously mill and uh, you know rogues with their mill as well um, having the escape mechanic, uh, things like that, that kind of get value off your graveyard seem pretty important. But also having ways to deal with your opponent's graveyard. So the Clothis, the Elspeth's, Elspeth's Nightmare, uh, Pluck of Predation seemed like it was pretty relevant in some of those matchups there. Um, so yeah, definitely feel pretty good about that. Um, running Dress here instead of the Agonizing Morse, uh, you know, like I said, because we are running so many two drops. So I think Dress is still pretty good against the control matchups. Um, other than that, I thought about like Kite Sail Freebooter, but it seemed kind of awkward. It doesn't really fit with the party theme either, but it does kind of fit in terms of just playing more creatures that can, uh, you know, steal things off your opponent's board and kind of help you go wide a little bit while slowing down their uh, removal and their sweepers. So that could be could be an option there out of the sideboard maybe. Um, also thought about Vivian because um, obviously since we are very creature heavy ourselves, but it's not quite sure where she would really slot in. Um, it's kind of it's kind of the other thing about the party mechanic is you kind of have to run, uh, you know, you have four different creature types and you have to run enough of them to actually make it relevant. Um, so obviously the Paragon is really clutch um, to kind of help you flesh out your your party. Uh, like having when we had the, this plus the Malakir Blood Priest uh, to play with some of our other creatures in play, the Paragon was so so important to kind of flesh out our party and get maximum value off our Blood Priest. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, definitely, I could definitely still get, see you trying to put Vivian, like maybe instead of the Gargroth, but um, just overall value that Gargroth provides, I think is just a little bit better um, than Vivian, but maybe. It's kind of a toss-up, honestly. Um, could just depend on what you have in your collection. I mean, they're both Mythics, obviously. Um, but otherwise, you know, the main deck... Um, yeah, it's not very budget-friendly with the Paragons. And things like that. The Shadow Skull Charger definitely, I think, is pretty pretty clutch. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of these cards you probably already have, like R Rankle, um, Robber of the Rich, uh, No Priest is just a two of, and definitely think this is something you should have in your collection for sure. Um, you, should probably, you probably have Robbers by now. The Paragon, those as a rare, kind of depends. If you are going to branch out and not do... Uh, if you are going to be into green with the party mechanic, you definitely need to look at this card. If you don't, I guess you could run the Pack Beast instead, but obviously not as good. 
probably have some Radas by now, I would imagine. Hagra uh definitely come around on this card. Definitely a big fan of um, uh, this type of effect. Even a three-color deck, uh, especially an aggressive one, still think it's worth running two copies. That really kind of depends on the build. And then, uh, obviously, you don't have to have these, but I think there are, if you do have them, definitely jam them. If not, just play, uh, you know, some basics or whatever. Um, maybe even a fourth temple, I guess. Trying to min trying to keep the the tap lands to a bare minimum here, so just a four base camp. And uh, since we're already in all four base camp, I should say we're in just the three temples. Just trying to keep the basics to a uh, uh, excuse me tap lands to a bare minimum. So we already have ten tap lands plus the uh, uh, Balagad and Hagra Mauling. So we're already kind of pushing the number of tap lands. Um, but with how many two drops we have, it seems like it generally works out pretty well. If you can just play a tap land on one and just have any untapped land here on two, you can generally just play uh, multiple spells like we were able to. Uh, especially in that la last matchup is a pretty good example of uh, kind of what the deck is trying to do. Um, but yeah, Visionary, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty reasonable card. You know, three three power draws you a card and it fleshes out your party. Um, the Adventure obviously works well against other kind of creature decks. Um... Again, it's not competitive, though, obviously, because it is just a 5-5 five, five Vigilance, which it is good if uh, you're just playing, like, some jank, uh, some jank matchup, then obviously it's perfectly fine and uh, even great. Um, and Zagras uh, is one of those cards that definitely pushes the power level of this deck uh, to make it very competitive. It, that was pretty clutch uh, in the first matchup here um, against the Mutate deck. Helped us win that game for sure. Uh, Rod also gives us some value because we can kind of be uh, aggressive, but we're a little bit light on removal to be as aggressive necessarily as we want to. So a lot of times the games will kind of go a little bit uh, longer. So having Rada kind of uh, flesh us out in those uh, mid-range matchups with hitting our land drops and kind of digging through our library a little bit more is uh, it's pretty clutch. So uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to more uh, party uh, support here in the coming uh, sets here. But, you know, it's going to be a little bit ways away. But, hey, John Party, it's a fun little deck. So thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, make sure you jank with a person.